Hey guys, Luke here, bringing you another sweet tutorial on making speed arts in HitFilm, as well as some useful tips and tricks and product overviews. Uh, this is the technique that I use for speeding up footage in HitFilm, mainly because I found that the speed effect in HitFilm is difficult and hard to control, but if however you prefer that effect, just go for it, it's pretty straightforward. And yeah, so what you're seeing on the screen right now is a speed art that I made around a week ago in Adobe Illustrator. And as you might guess, the speed art was made inside of HitFilm. So first things first, you will need a screen recorder. And I'm just going to assume that you're just learning right now and are just getting into speed arts and wanting to make them. Um, and you're looking for the programs that you need. So when I first started, I had no clue what kind to get. And I experimented with several different products. So for those of you who are curious, um, here are a few recommendations for you to get started. Uh, and for those of you who already have screen recorders and don't want to watch me uh, tell you pretty much what you already know, feel free to skip ahead in the video. So let's begin. Uh, firstly, I suggest that if you have the money, go out and purchase a program like Camtasia. And I know a lot of people argue that this is the best screen recorder uh, for both Windows users and Mac users and it has some really neat and professional editing features um, like you can have multiple tracks you can trim your videos as you can see down here at enhance um, it has some themes backgrounds callouts graphics and a lot of sweet stuff so I highly recommend it I've only ever used the demo but moving on we have snake it and Snakeit is also made by TechSmith, the same corporation as Camtasia. And unlike Camtasia, which is $300, this one goes for around $50. And if you're a student like me, you can get it for even cheaper, like $25. So unlike Camtasia, you can't really edit your videos. I see that now you can trim your videos. And I purchased this program about a month ago. And it looks like they've released a new version where you can trim videos and whatnot. Uh, and you can also take screenshots and edit images and whatnot on this. So yeah, for the money, it's a great deal. What you're seeing on the screen right now is what you'll get when you download this program. Once again, you can download a free trial for this. I recommend you give it a shot. My only complaint about this program is that you can only film in like 15 to, or like 10 frames per second which isn't like the smoothest i mean most people don't really mind or notice unless you point it out which i kind of am doing right now anyways um but it's great like if i want to export an hour and a half long screen capture it does it in about 30 seconds and the quality is really great and it's all that i need because although camtasia has all of these different editing features i have programs like hitfilm and sony vegas and whatnot which kind of makes it unnecessary to spend that additional 275 dollars so yeah so here we are moving on to screenflow by telestream and uh this program is only for mac users and from what i've heard it's pretty good unlike camtasia it's 99 dollars um but I don't use Macs, so I don't really know much about it. If you're into Macs, uh, be sure to check this one out. I see that you have some cool effects like Camtasia, such as transitions, multiple layers, and yeah. So be sure to check that out. And anyways, so we are moving on to Blueberry Flashback Recorder. And I used the Express version of this for quite some time. Uh, all my older videos where the mouse was highlighted in yellow. Uh, I don't know if you guys have kept up with my channel, but those videos all use this program. So if you want a reference to see what the quality was like, check those out. Uh, I guess my only complaint about this was the quality was a little low. However, I was using the free version. I'm sure it'd be different with the pro version. Um, and when I would export... Uh, for example, a two hour long recording, it would be about 40 gigabytes. And 
Maybe I was doing something wrong, which is probably just the case, or maybe it was because they're AVR files. I mean, it was free, it did the job for about a year, so I can't complain. Really great stuff. So yeah, just check out some screen recorders on the interweb. I know that there are tons of free ones out there and tons that you can pay money for if you want those extra features. So yeah, test them out, see what works best for you, and yeah. Alrighty, so here we are inside of HitFilm. I'll be using HitFilm 2 Ultimate for this example. And when I recorded my screen, I recorded in 1920 by 1080. Um, so of course, you're going to want to match this to your screen resolution or the resolution that you exported from your screen recorder. And for now, I'm just going to go with a frame rate of 10 frames per second. You're not going to want to go with something high because, well, I guess you'll find out in a moment. So let's click Start Edit. And here we are. So what we're going to do first is import all of our footage. So what I'm going to do is drag them all into the project media panel and I recorded um, I recorded this design over the course of like two weeks <laughs> so yeah in total it was like three hours and 42 minutes and nobody really wants to watch four hours worth of me fumbling around in illustrator so what we're gonna do is make a speed art and shrink this down to three minutes instead of four hours so first thing we're going to do is right click and go to properties or we can click this gear which will take us to our properties as well and you can see right now that i recorded my screen in 10 frames per second and what i'm going to do is crank up the frame rate and uh, actually before you do this just note the duration at the bottom down here so right now this one says 41 minutes and 35 seconds so what i'm going to do is crank the frame rate up to 100 which is the highest frame rate that you can do in hit film currently um and then you'll see that now it's only four minutes and nine seconds so we're going to click ok and then we're going to do the same with each of these so we're going to uncheck the box that says from file change it from 10 frames per second to 100 and you'll see that the video transferred from 1 hour and 3 minutes to 6 minutes and 18 seconds so let's repeat this process and that looks good so now we're just going to drag each of these into the project. And I'm just going to put them all in order. Like so. And you'll see that if I were to export it right now, it would be about 22 minutes. So that's not bad. Um, but I mean, obviously nobody wants to watch it, even if it's 22 minutes rather than four hours. So if I play through it right now, you'll see that it's, it is sped up um, by 10 times, but we want to speed it up even more. So what we're going to do is export what we have so far. So you're just going to go to the export tab and I've already done this, but you would obviously just export it. I usually go as MP4s, really nice quality. And you'll see that right now, if I were just to zoom in and take a look at the resolution. And now what I'm going to do is import a copy of the re-rendered um, version of all of these. And yeah, it's 22 minutes. What we're going to do though is change the settings of this one from 100 from 10 to well if you wanted to do 100 uh it would speed it up 72 times so unless you're doing like a time lapse or something you probably don't need to speed it up 72 times but i'm going to change mine to around a frame rate of 70 
which takes it down to here. So it goes to about 3 minutes and 9 seconds, which is looking pretty nice. As you can see, if I play through this now, it's going pretty fast. So yeah, uh, like I said though, if you did go up to 100, it would make your clip even shorter. In my case, it would end around here, which is the 2 minute and 15 second mark. So yeah. So what you're going to want to do next is import something like your intro. So here we go. I'm just going to place it into here at the beginning of my video. Scroll in a little bit. Delete the gap. So I have something like this. all happens pretty quick so what I'm gonna do is space it out a little bit like this and then I'm just gonna add a nice fade color effect to the beginning of the speed art so that the intro goes and then the speed art fades in I'm also going to do this at the end of the video so that it fades out. Next thing we're going to want to do is import the final image or animation or whatever you did in the speed art um, into your timeline. Uh, this is just something I like to do. I know a lot of people like to see what the final product looks like. so. This is a good way of doing that. And I'm going to change the duration of that to be around 10 seconds long. And once again, add a nice fade to color effect to the beginning and the end. Uh, the last touch I like to do when I make a speed art is add in the music. And for example, I will pick the song Kill Paris, I Do Love You. And bring this in. I'll just turn down my audio. And we have this nice music playing in the background and a nice speed art going on. And then of course, by the end, the music's still going, it fades out. We have our image, so everyone can see it and admire it. If it's good, I guess. <laughs> and then fades out. And that's just where I'm going to end the song. I'm going to put a nice fade. Uh, obviously, you can put more effort into this if you'd like to, uh, for example, sync the music to your intro or sync the music to your speed art or something like that. But yeah, it's looking pretty sweet. I guess one final thing that you could do is make a composite shot out of your final image. And we're just going to make this a 3D plane, create a 3D camera, and then simply animate the position of the camera at the end and at the beginning. So at the beginning, I'm just going to make it zoom in to somewhere like this. And now if I'm to play it, here we have it. It's looking pretty sweet. So yeah, I guess I had intended to give out some tips and tricks as I made this, but that didn't really happen. So I guess what I would say is don't make your videos too long because sometimes your audience doesn't have an extremely long attention span. Like as you can see, I made this four and a half hour video, three minutes. So if you're making a one hour video, you're probably not going to want to make it 10 minutes. And it also just looks much better. Another thing you can do is, while going through your speed art, cut out the clips that you're making mistakes in. Because during my recording, there was times where I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And rather than fumbling around for 20 minutes, and you guys watching me fumble around for 20 minutes, 
I decided to pause my recording, think of what I was going to do, and then continued it. So that's a recommendation I would go for. <laughs> Cut out like unnecessary things that people don't really want to watch. And even like if you're using Skype or something while you're recording, maybe just like turn it off. <laughs> because personally, I don't really find it enjoyable when I'm watching a speeder and then, you know, 40% of the video, they're on Skype pretty much. So yeah, I guess another recommendation would be yeah, just keep everything, like, simple, stupid, because my first speed art, I had no idea what I was doing, and I honestly spent, like, a couple hours making a speed art, and as you're watching this tutorial, you're probably wondering how that's even possible, because this is, like, a 10-minute tutorial, at least the hit film aspect. So, I mean, don't stress too much. <laughs> just keep it simple. Um, do your best. And I do highly recommend that you put music into the background. I know that there's a lot of great channels that you could follow on YouTube to find royalty-free music. I'll link a few in the description. I guess a few examples are NCS, which is non-copyright sounds, and Safe Tracks. They upload regularly, and they got some sweet stuff going on there. So another thing you could do is contact an artist, for example, Jaku. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but I've used his music like multiple times in my speed arts and I can just contact him through email or Skype or something and he can give me the green light and say, yeah, go ahead. I'm not going to flag your video for using my music or something like that. So yeah, and you're probably also wondering, you know, um, I made this video and I exported from HitFilm twice. And you're probably like, the quality is probably really bad. But, for example, I'm playing a speed art in the background right now, so that you guys aren't looking at black. And this uh, speed art has been through HitFilm three times now. So, I guess you can determine for yourself whether or not you want to actually go through with this. But, the quality is well maintained when you export it from HitFilm. Especially when you export it as an MP4. And the resolution that I recorded it in to begin with was really high, so pretty much it's not very noticeable if there is any difference. There's probably some, but I think it looks perfectly fine. So yeah, hopefully you guys like this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something, or if not, I guess, thanks for watching anyways. So if you have any recommendations or tutorial ideas, I know that I get quite a few requests. And I will hopefully hop on to those during the summer. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Peace.